Hello, and welcome to the Lady Stairs Nets podcast. I'm Sarah, and I'm coming to you today from Philadelphia, where I've been for the past couple of weeks, and I've got a bunch of knitting to show you, so let's just start. Um, my first finished object, and my only finished object, is this pair of socks. Um, maybe a running theme through this episode is that my knitting hasn't been going that well recently. Um, lots of mistakes and mishaps have been happening, and this pair of socks, although beautiful, is one example of that. Um, they are the Erica Socks from the Lina 52 Weeks of Socks book. I've made, I think, five or six pairs of socks from that book now, which is, which is good. Um, and I knit these out of the Sugar Plum Circus sock yarn, I think in the color Forbidden Forest. Um, the first one of these I made very quickly, and then the second one took me about six weeks to knit. I just wasn't, my heart wasn't really in it. Um, and there's, I guess my tension must have changed between the first and the second sock, because the second one is way too small for me. Um, if I hold them up next to each other and line up the heels, you can see that the one in the back is longer. Um, it's the same number of rows. It's the same number of stitches in a round. So I guess it must be my tension that's different. But my tension, um, I've never had issues like this before with my tension. So I don't know why why it came out so small. Um, it's also the same number of leaf repeats. It's hard to show you because the color is so dark, but yeah. So I need to unpick the toe in the smaller one and add maybe like 15 to 20 rows, quite a lot. Um, they're both, well, even the one that fits better is a little bit small, so maybe I should just do both of them. Um, but then they're going to be uneven because I have the same number of leaf repeats on both of them. So I'm not totally sure what to do. I don't really want to unravel the whole thing. Um, I love the yarn. And the pattern is good. It's definitely not an issue with the pattern. I think it's just an issue with me. Uh, so... Yeah, sort of a finished object, but they do need a bit more work from me, which is disappointing. But I don't want them to fall to the back, to fall to the wayside. I want to keep working on this until they're done and they're good. So, um, yeah, it's a bit of a shame, though. <laughs> so that's my first project. You'll probably continue seeing more of them for a while because they're not done. Um, I'm not done with them. They are a bit done. Um, so yeah, bit of a weird one. Um, I also finished a test knit in the past two weeks. Um, it's, a, it's a secret test knit for a designer. It's going to be in a magazine later in the year and um, that that didn't turn out that great either. It's a cardigan and there's this big like pouch gapping at the back of the neck. Um, I emailed the designer and sent lots of pictures and asked if anyone else was having this issue because I can kind of see it happening in the pictures that the designer had sent, but she said that no one else had that issue. Um, and I should try blocking it again, which I don't think is gonna. <laughs> I don't, I've blocked it, but I didn't pin it, um, but I don't really think that that's going to help. So I'm, I, I need, think I need to take out the button band and add some seams, um, just like mattress stitch the section together. But I, I'll show you more about that when I can show it. Um, but it was, it's disappointing because I had spent a really long time working on it and, um, yeah. It just didn't turn out the way that I wanted it to, but hopefully I'll be able to fix it so that it's wearable. 
Um, my other project, my next project is a work in progress and um, it's the Yanni Pullover by Orlin Souk, aka Tetbesh Designs. Um, I've shown this in a couple of videos and I've made quite a lot of progress on it and um, I chose to stripe two colors of Whistlebear, Chibi, and Marsh. Um, I think the colors are called Longitude is this light blue and then the dark blue is called All at Sea. It's an iron weight 175 meters per 100 grams and um, I got this yarn as a Christmas present from my dad a year and a half ago and um, he when he went on the website because he knows I love whistle bear he wanted to get an iron weight for me and they didn't have a lot of skeins in stock so he just got like a three or four of a few different colors and I wasn't so sure what I was going to make because I don't really wear a lot of blue or use blue very often. But I really liked the way that they looked striped together when I swatched. And I thought that this design would be really perfect because it's oversized and it's got these really interesting raglan... Well, it's like a saddle shoulder that then goes out into a raglan style. Or is it even a raglan? I don't know. But I like it. I'm doing two row stripes. Last time I recorded, I had told you that I realized that I had made a mistake. And for the last 10 four row repeats of the raglan, so the last 40 rows, I had been decreasing at the rate of the sleeves on the body and the rate I was supposed to do on the body on the sleeves. So um yeah it was it was not I couldn't forge ahead I had to go back and it I was in the process of deciding whether I was going to try and drop down and see if I could like pick up the stitches to fix it down each raglan seam or if I was just going to rip back that's like a lot to rip back um so I thought I would start with trying to drop down and I have successfully dropped down and fixed the raglan seams. So I think that you'll still be able to see a little bit of gauge weirdness where I was dropping down, but I do think it will block out. So if you can see, like, I think from here and to there, so that little section is the section that I dropped down in. And each raglan seam took me about two hours to fix. Um, two hours of like stressed, punched over, um, fixing and then rejigging all the stitches so that the tension was good. So um, that was a big endeavor and I'm very happy that it worked out. I decided to start with the most difficult one the one where I'm carrying the color change because even though it might have been good to have practice on the easier ones, um, I, I knew that if I couldn't do this corner, I would have to rip back anyway, even if the other corners were good. So I thought that I would just try this one first and if I couldn't do it rip it all back so I wouldn't waste my time doing the three easy ones before I knew if I could do the hard one. I hope that makes sense. Um, and yeah it took a really long time but I did manage to do all of them and I have since knitted the sleeves. Here's the first sleeve and here's the second sleeve. I just have the cuff I have one more stripe of each color and then the cuff to go on this sleeve. I did add some decreases into the into the sleeves at the end, starting here. Um, they were just really big and I thought that they would get in the way. So I had, I think I did every 10 rows 
I decreased every, no, every 10, I knit 10, knit two together, and then I knit three rows plain, and then I knit nine, knit two together, and then I knit three rows plain, and then I did eight, knit two together, and then I did the cuff. So um, that's how I did the decreases at the end of this sleeve. I've done the same on this one as far as I've gotten. When I finished the raglan, like when I finished the yoke and I went to count my stitches, um, I noticed that I had about 20 stitches missing from each sleeve and I didn't know where I could have possibly made that mistake because I know that I had made that big mistake in the shaping of the yoke, but I really stuck to the pat. I was trying to stick to the pattern as far as I could. Um, and I didn't, that's like quite a lot of stitches to be off. Um, but I tried it on and it fit and it looked like I still had a good amount of room in the sleeves. So I decided I would just leave it because it was the same on both sides and I didn't really want it to be 20 stitches bigger. That's like four, over four inches, five inches bigger. I didn't really want to add that to the sleeve circumference. So I decided I would just leave it and um, I can try it on to show you. I think that that was a good call. The sleeves have positive ease, but not like a huge, huge amount. Um, the body on the other hand has a lot of positive ease. So this is what this is what it looks like on. Um, so it's a very deep yoke, you can see, um, which I am a little bit a little bit nervous about, but I'm just following the pattern and it's true to the pattern. And um, so the <laughs> sleeve yoke goes almost to my elbow. Not quite, maybe like this far from my elbow. Um, so the sleeves are actually pretty short compared to a lot of other sleeves that I've knit. Um, but I mean, like if you pull them down, they're more than long enough. But I, I wanted to make them a little bit long because I know that sometimes the neckline will pull it in a little bit. And um, I did buy another skein of dark blue because I thought that I only had three skeins of it, but then I found another one that my cat had knocked under my sofa. So I actually probably didn't need to buy another skein of dark blue if I'd known that I had this one. Um, but I decided to do leave the ribbing at the end for the new skein of dark blue that's arriving before I knew that I had another one because I think they'll probably be very different dye lots um, since I've had this for a year and a half. That's this. I said in my last episode that I pointed the um, out the similarity to this with the Blue's Clues guy and it still definitely does look like that. And yeah, it'll get a lot, I'll put a lot of more length on the body and it gets a neckline of um, two by two rib with a little bit of stockinette curl at the end. That's what it says in the pattern. I really like that. So I'm going to do that as the pattern recommends and probably a pretty deep rib in the navy blue at the bottom of the body. And I'm not going to knit it cropped, but it does have decreases. So you can see like this is the body, so it'll have some decreases, but it won't be, I mean, it's never going to end up being tight. So yeah, it's a really interesting shape, one that I haven't knit before. Um, I've never knit a yoke this deep on purpose before, so I hope that I end up liking the way that it looks. Although it's quite hot, so I actually don't know if I'm going to get to wear, wear it much until next winter. And I've been enjoying working with this yarn. I really like Whistle Bear. I've made, I made a cardigan in Cheviot Marsh last spring, or maybe it was even the spring before that. I think it was two years ago. It was a pre-knit for Albiona McLaughlin, 
and it was a timepiece cardigan and I really liked that. So yeah, it's been great to work with it. When I bought another two skeins of this, it hasn't arrived yet, but I did also get another skein or two of the other color that I have. So I can, so I have enough of that to make a jumper as well. So when that arrives, I'll show you. And um, yeah, that's about all I have to say about this. I've made quite a lot of progress. The rows for the body are very long, even though it is a thick, thick yarn for me. Um, the rows for the body are still quite long, so it will probably take a little while, but I do enjoy knitting the stripes. And I'll probably put the neckline on after the new yarn comes so that I can have an idea of what it's going to look like when I'm wearing it. So yeah, I'm enjoying this. It's fun to work on. I love the stripes. And I've still got quite a long ways to go. My last project is a hat. Um, it's I'm making the iris hat by Sari Norland, um, which is a top-down, one-by-one ribbed um, beanie. And I think the pattern has options for either DK fingering weight and a mohair, which she says is a DK, or fingering weight held double, which she also says is a DK. So um, I wanted to use this skein, well now it's a cake, of Line Weight by Pearl Soho. It's in this very bright pink. Um, it's like between, it's like a pastel neon. Um, and Line Weight is a yarn that I've worked with before. I've actually made I made a baby jumper out of gre a green line weight and I made, I held it with a mohair for my Paloma pullover. Um, so I've used this yarn before. I do like it, but it is a single ply and I'm not so keen on using single plies for garments anymore. I think with the mohair it's totally fine, but it just doesn't wear super well in my experience. It's just quite delicate. So. I was kind of keen to, I'm keen to use up some of my single ply that I had envisioned going into garments. This was always a single skein. I got this second hand because um, I really loved the color, but I was going to do like a split intarsia jumper with this and like a neon pastel purple, but I'm still interested in that idea. It was an idea that I had in 2019 um, so it's sort of been a, a while in my head and I'm not super keen on it any like I like it but I don't think I would make it anymore um, and I definitely wouldn't want to make it with this yarn so I thought I would use this to make a hat because I'm a big pink person as you can tell from my trousers today oh you can kind of see in the mirror <laughs> um, and yeah I thought it would be really nice to have a bright pink hat for the winter. So I'm holding it double, which is causing me a little bit of issues just because my cake is messy and it is not a yarn with a lot of um, elasticity. So it it's like slippery and not very elastic and it, it's almost behaving like a plant fiber because it, it's getting tangled and like snarled and I can't put it in a project bag or it'll get even worse. Like it's all sliding over to the side of the cake. Um, so I'm trying to be very gentle and keeping it in my yarn bowl, which was a gift from my boyfriend a few years ago, which I use every day. And um, I am enjoying the project. I'm knitting it on DPNs. Um, it looks a bit like a sea urchin right now, I think. And um, it's a three millimeter needle size. The hat has one of, what's it called? The loop cast on where you can pull it tight. This is a very um, fragile yarn. So I'm 
waiting until I'm at a point where I'm going to weave the end in and then I will pull it tight and weave the end in and um, it is already like a little bit fuzzy as you can see so that's not ideal but I think that when it's done that won't be as noticeable as it is to me right now um, but it's creating the most beautiful dense ribbed fabric with the two plies held together with the two strands held together um, and it's a very tight gauge and the only thing I'm a little bit concerned about is if it's going to fit. Um, I added 12 stitches to the final head circumference um, number and I have a very small head but I was just looking at it and I was thinking that's not going to fit. That's not going to fit on my head and I've had kind of a lot of knitting fails or Maybe fails is too strong of a word, but I've had to fix a lot of mistakes. So it would be really nice to have a project that was just like a win and very easy. And um, it's already, this is already a little bit more high maintenance than I wish it was because of the ball getting all kind of tangly. Um, I am enjoying the pattern. It's like really simple. Um, I guess it's just a top down hat so it doesn't need to be complicated, but it's only two pages. And so, yeah, I'm through all of the crown shaping. So I'm past the point where I would need really to use the pattern. Um, and yeah, I, I've i made the muscle bra hat a lot and I've made the Manhattan hat and I just wanted a, a more, classic crown shaping for this one than either of those two um and i wanted it to be one by one rib i did try to make the leaf hat a few months ago but i just couldn't i didn't i, I didn't get the hang of measuring my gauge in one by one rib the first time i made it it was way too small and the second time it was way too big and then i just gave up so yeah, this is a thin fingering weight, thin fingering weight though. I think it's 500 meters per 100 grams. Um, so it should be fine. And the pattern says that you need like 600 meters. It's a double folded, but I've only used like 15 grams and I'm, I'm about, an inch past the crown shaping. So that's only 15 grams out of 100. So that's like less than one fifth of all of the yarn. So I think that that's gonna be more than enough. I'll just knit until I run out of the skein and it'll be great. I'll get to use the whole skein in the same project. And um, it's okay if it's not long enough to double over. Um, yeah, and I don't know what, I might do a tubular, a sewn bind, I might do a sewn bind off, but I'm not totally sure since I don't know how well the yarn will hold up to being pulled through all of those stitches. So we'll see. But I think it's going to be a really nice finished project. And it's exciting to use up the skein that I've had now for five years into something that I know that I'm gonna wear a lot. That's my final project. I feel like this has been a very short episode, but I guess I've spent a lot of time working on test knits, the, the one test knit this um, past two weeks. I did buy a knitting book. It's the Lina Moosh and Friends book. Um, I just had this, I wanted to make a little stuffed animal for my boyfriend's niece. And I've seen some of the finished projects that people have made from this book and they are so cute. So I bought the book and I'm really excited to start knitting some of the things. I'll show you some of the pictures. Like, look at how cute they are. I think I want to start with Moosh himself, which is the bear. I think that this is Moosh. Um, and yeah, 
There he is in his outfit. I just think they're so cute. I, I'll use, I'll, uh, I, I will use a superwash yarn so that it can be washed when I give it because I'm giving it to a baby. Um, but I don't have a lot of natural color superwash. So I might need to buy a skein or two. Maybe I'll get an acrylic that can go in the washing machine. That might be good. Um, but I think they're just so cute and I like the little clothes. And I have a lot of baby cousins now. My cousins are having children. So if I find that I love knitting little stuffed animals, then that's great because I've got a lot of people to give them to. Knitting stuffed animals is actually where I first, the reason why I first learned to knit as a child because I was a huge stuffed animal kid and um, I learned how to make myself little sheep. That was my first project and it was just garter and I knit, I'm, I was making a piece of fabric that was this shape and then just sewing along so it would have the little legs. And I made a lot of those little sheep and I played with them when I was seven or eight and it was really fun. And then um, in college I made a stuffed animal for my boyfriend, which I have up there. I'll grab it. I made this for my boyfriend in college, freshman year of college. He, I think the pattern is called Tarragon the Gentle Giant or something. And I changed the wings to be bigger and more exciting. And I did double knitting on them. And um, yeah, he's just got a lot of personality. It's been almost 10 years since I made him. And look at the little tail. And then I attached the legs so they could, he could like sit on the edge of something and have dangly legs. That's so cute. Um, yeah, so I think it might be time to start making stuffed animals again. Although I don't, the, my worry is that I'll get too into it and then my house will just be filled with stuffed animals again. And I, part of me would enjoy that, but I do already have enough you know so the goal is to make them and also to give them away maybe i'll just make one for myself if i really really like it um so yeah very excited about that book i got it from woolen company the online store um i think it's published by lina it was 32 dollars and i wanted the physical copy because I like having a physical copy um, and I've been getting a lot of use out of my 52 weeks of socks book. So yeah, also um, the Willy Thistle podcast, Maggie has been making stuffed animals from this book and they are so cute. So I'm, I've been like eyeing it up for a while and really wanting to start. I did try and start, but the, with the DPNs, it was too fiddly and like having one stitch on each needle to start out. And I thought I just, I'll wait till I finish my sock so I can use my magic loop needle because I only have one needle I can use for magic loop. Um, so yeah, I do think that the pig looks a little bit, um, like disturbed, but that makes me like him more in a way. They're so cute. Yeah. And I bought, so the other acquisition that I have is that I have bought um, the yarn to finish this jumper. And that hasn't arrived yet. So I'll show you that when it arrives. Otherwise, I haven't bought anything. I've been very tempted to cast on a Salty Days jumper by Kutova Kika. Um, I just, I really like that design. And I kind of want to get a yarn that has a cotton content. Um, 
so it can be a little bit more of a summer jumper but again I'm sort of waiting until I've finished this current batch of projects before I do anything like that and um yeah I'd like to, I'd prioritize working from something I already have but I don't have any plant based blends at all I've got two balls of knitting for all of pure silk, which I might make into a tank top or something over the summer. I don't know if that would be enough and I don't really want to buy more, but yeah, I don't have any plant-based blends. So that's a possibility, but I'm, I, yeah, I'm sitting on the fence about that. Um, I guess I'll just have to tell you next time about what I decide to do. I, the other thing that I've decided, if you're a returning viewer, I am stopping working on the Geo Gradient. I have modified it a lot. Um, I'll insert a picture here if you don't remember or um, haven't seen it. And um, it's just huge. <laughs> and I think it would look better with another ruffle, but I really don't want to put any more time and energy into it. And I don't want it to be any bigger. It's already too big for me to use. So I think I'm just going to call it for that. And um, I do really enjoy knitting the mystery knit along shawls. So I'm not sure what I'll do in the future because I love my scarf that I finished, finished a few months ago. I wear that all the time in the winter. And I think that instead of making shawls, I want to be making scarves because um, I actually find those to be very practical. Um, so I could maybe modify the mystery knit along to be a, a scarf instead of a shawl. Um, or maybe like I've been sort of trying to get a job at a yarn store or so maybe I would knit like a sample or I would do a sample knit for a dyer um, or something like that. Because I, I like to participate and I want to join in, but um, I don't really want to own another one. Um, especially since this year's one is so big. It's my fault that it's so big, but it is really, really big and I'm going to have to store it now. Um, so, so yeah, Geo Gradient we're considering to be done. Um, it was a fun project and I'm glad to now be able to move on. The only other thing knitting related that's been going on is that I've I have decided to like really take caring for my finished objects seriously and I've bought like sweater bags to protect them from moths so I'm going to now I'm just a very disorganized person so this it doesn't come easily to me um, but I really don't want the things that I've made to get destroyed by moths and we do have moths in the house and um, I don't store my yarn out anymore and I try and keep stuff put away and we've got like traps and if I see moths in something I'll either put it in the freezer or I'll put it like outside in the sun. Um, so I'm doing my best but I really don't want my sweaters to get ruined so I bought these like moth bags. I wanted to get just like plastic bags but I, I had gotten some from Lakeland in Edinburgh and I couldn't find anything comparable in the States and it cost $40 to ship it from Lakeland to America and that's just too much to pay for plastic bags. So I bought some like partially cloth, partially plastic moth protecting bags from the container store and I'm going to wash all of my jumpers put them out to dry and then as soon as they're dry put them into their little moth bags for the summer and only take one out at a time that's my goal and then put them right back in and if they're all in their own bags if there is a moth only one of them will get ruined as opposed to all of them um i used mothballs a few years ago and that was a mistake because everything smells like mothballs and it smells horrible and it's been a long process of me trying to get the mothball smell out of stuff. So yeah, all of my currently in rotation jumpers, I, it just started to get hot. So that's why I'm kind of putting them all away now. They're all in their bags. I'm going through and washing them all. And once I finish 
those, I'll start pulling out the ones that are still in the mothball boxes and I'll start doing those because I don't want anything to get ruined. Um, and it's tough. I, yeah. So if you, I don't know, if you have like a, if you found like a moth trap or a product that works really well, I would love to know. Um, I can't use the spray that kills moths that you like spray around your house because it's very toxic to cats and I have a cat. Um, so I can't use that, but I have moth traps and they work okay, but they don't work that well. Um, and we've got, my boyfriend bought like a lavender bags and cedar chips and those seem to be pretty good. Um, so yeah, we're trying, but I think it's just a bit of a struggle. And any new stash, although there hasn't been a lot recently, I put in it like a new separate Ziploc bag. I've got like the big Ziploc um, 10 gallon vacuum seal bag. So I think that there are probably moths in my stash bag, although I haven't seen any in a while. Um, but slowly I'm like freezing stuff and moving into the other bag so that I can try and get rid of them. But yeah, so I think summer is a good time to do that because I'm not going to be wearing that many jumpers. So yeah, I think that's just part of life. As to surgery recovery, it's going pretty well. I feel good. I've been able to exercise and do normal stuff again, pretty much. I haven't started doing dog walking again, which I was doing near here, um, just because I think that might be a little bit too much for me, but hopefully soon I'll be able to do that and that will be me totally back to normal. Um, and yeah, it's starting to get really hot, so. I'm doing my best to maintain a good attitude about the heat and I, I wear my hat and wear sunscreen. So we'll make it through the summer. I hope that you're having a really good day and that your knitting is going a little bit better than mine is right now. And hopefully next time I will be able to show you a bunch of successful projects that have gone really well. So thank you so much for watching. Goodbye.